Welcome to Wiener Heads. Welcome back to another special interview today here with Ken Skupski. I really appreciate you joining us. Former LSU competitive player, champion on the ATP Tour, and now stay-at-home dad due to everything that's going on. How are you doing, Ken? Cheers, man. Nice. Yeah, it's great to have me. But it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy times at the moment, but it's, you know, it's... It's me being able to spend a hell of a lot of quality time with my kids right now, which mm -hmm. as a tennis player on the tour for the last 10, 12 years, it's, it's been very difficult to, to have that time and not to stress about the next tennis practice or the next trip away. So, you know what, making the most of it. Um, at the moment, we're obviously very early on in the lockdown for, for the UK, but uh, hopefully if we can get through it and not kill, kill each other, then we'll, we'll be doing okay. How did you, where were you when you first found out that the tour, obviously it started at Indian Wells. When did you first find out that this was starting, I guess, for the tour that affected your job? Yeah. Well, obviously, Neil, my brother, he's he's on the tour as well. He's mm -hmm. uh, he's a little bit higher ranked. So I've been, I speak to him, obviously, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and he was, he was going to travel to Indian Wells, I think, the next day. So... He messaged me saying that obviously there was a chance that these things were going to happen and it was a, a bit of a shock. But again, with obviously seeing what's been happening over in Asia, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't also surprised once um, once these things materialised and we started to see things happening in uh, Italy and in Europe and then moving on to the couple of things that happened over in the States. Uh, I think it was in, in the northwest. I think they, they sort of contracted it early and New York. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, you look back at it now and you think it was obviously – there was. It was an obvious choice, but at the time, it was a bit of a shock that it was it was suspended so fast. It was suspended so fast, and everyone seemed to be affected by it because then tournaments started getting canceled left and right, and then everyone had to reschedule their travel plans. And then after, I think it was Phoenix, once they announced that they were going to do full Tennis Channel coverage on it and then they canceled that, it was kind of the reality yeah. check that everyone hit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've obviously got a... Um, a, a calendar that is global. I know it's yeah. not something that just happens in the States, but uh, we've got a global uh, schedule with, you know, a huge number of players from multiple parts of the world. And it's very difficult to sort of accept that these things happen. And, and it's very sad that it's happened, but we have to also appreciate the severity of it. Um, and the idea that, you know, if players who are traveling on airplanes week in, week out can be passing this virus on to yeah. numerous people, um, and spreading it to new places, and that's obviously not a good thing. Um, you know, we've got to, you know, listen to what we've been told. You know, the UK is obviously in lockdown now, and I think America will probably follow soon. Um, yeah. And it, it's, you know, we just have to ride it out and, and hope that everybody that is involved in this is, is gets through it safely. I know it's it's horrible to see some of the pictures that you see online and, and yeah. stuff like that with the news, and you know, they, they can make it look a little bit more Hollywood in a way, but the reality is these things are actually happening. Yeah. Um, and. The tour might not necessarily make it back in my mind for quite a considerable length of time, just for the fact that it's it's spreading so rapidly and it's not going away very quick. And they've got to wait, obviously, for these vaccines to to materialise to sort of give everybody a chance to sort of calm things down in each individual country. Yeah, I completely agree. But I think there's a positive thing that we can take away with this, and I think we talked about this before I started recording was that you get to spend more time with your family. You obviously have three kids and traveling so much really does, I guess, hinder the ability to see your family so often. And I think it's a kind of a blessing in disguise, really. Yeah, I mean, I don't know any different in the sense that I've always been the one that travels. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost, um, you know, second nature to them to see daddy leave. But as they've grown up, you start to appreciate the fact that they understand more, but also probably get more upset with the idea that daddy's got to go away in two days time and mm -hmm. and that them type of things are you know it's heart-wrenching to see them cry at the door when you're leaving for like two or three weeks yeah. um but now they you know in some ways they're they're happy that dad doesn't have a suitcase half packed ready to go <laughs> it's um you know dad's not going to practice every day you know he's, he's trying to do things in the house and they see these things but you know, it's not much of my day to sort of, you know, try to keep fit in, in whatever way possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I get to, you know, get to spend quality time with them. You know, I don't have to think about what I'm doing later on or this afternoon or tomorrow. Um, I can just give my, you know, everything to them and 
and it's um, it's obviously a nice thing, and it's it's you know it, it's going to last for a considerable length of time. So these uh, these next few months are going to be very special for me. I think. I, I completely agree, and it's very it, the dynamic that you create, especially, is very it's it's heartwarming to say the least. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, not 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 everybody on the, in the tennis world has kids yet. Um, yeah, I mean, they they are incredible. They are a pain in the backside at times. Um, they're very demanding, um, but there's also so much quality time and so many th- joy joyful moments that they bring to your life. Um, you know, the only thing that dif- is difficult right now is obviously my wife is working. Mm-hmm. Um, she goes to work three days a week, and that's because. Obviously, the situation with you know key workers in the UK, they're allowed to still work. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm I'm a stay-at-home dad, and you know it's it's a challenge for me because they've stopped schools here. Um, so I'm becoming a teacher as well for them, and it's you know you get thrown into the deep end, but you deal with it, you get on with it, um, you try your best. You know sometimes they don't want to listen, um, <laughs> but at times I I, I don't want to listen to them either. <laughs> so I'll I, you know I'll do whatever I can to sort of help help them sort of improve with their um, studies um, but again they're still very young so I'm not going to stress too much about them improving they will, they will benefit from having you know a little bit of structure to each day but mm-hmm. the most important thing is they sort of don't think about what's going on in the outside world and we you know we can shield them from all the stresses that's going on and we can you know enjoy the time together and just play in the garden and, and just see them growing up that's, that's, that's the main thing that's the best part and has any that's of them better. Have any of them picked up tennis yet, or are you kind of waiting for it? Um, my eldest is a much he much prefers swimming. Um, really? I, I've tried. The, I, yeah. The, the, the difficult thing again is the amount of time that I get to spend with them playing. Yeah. Um, you know, they they tend. I mean, Taylor's just turned seven. He wants to build things. He loves Lego. He loves um, going outside to play chase, and you know, just simple things. That kid, you know, even likes to do gardening. But I have to admit, so do I. <laughs> um, you know, so he, we we do get to spend a lot of quality time together, but he's not necessarily the sporty one. Yeah. Um, I think my uh, four year old uh, Noah, he's definitely more sporty. He, he loves you know going in the garden to play football, throw balls. Um, he wants to play golf because he's seen dad play golf recently. Um, and yeah. tennis is another one that he where my parents live. It backs onto a tennis club, and whenever my grandparents. When my parents are there, his grandparents, um, they're always playing tennis with him. So he, he loves it, and I'll get out there as much as I can with him in the garden to, to whack a few balls around. But I know the balls will be going uh, over the fence to, to her neighbours <laughs> probably very quickly. Um, and we've obviously got to keep our social distancing. Uh, of but but generally, yeah, he's he's more of the sporty one. And the the youngest one, uh, I've just noticed now. I think he's a lefty, so he's definitely going to be playing in tennis. Oh yes, that's what we like to see. <laughs> I've been trying to get a squad together, but it's the first time I've come across a little lefty. So that's oh cool. okay. Maybe maybe you guys can play some doubles together. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of transitioning into more of your tennis career. I yeah. looking on the LSU website, it, it seems like it just never ends of your accolades for what you accomplished in college. Like it just it's a never ending first team, first team, first team champion. How did first off, why did you pick LSU? Yeah, I mean I, I really enjoyed my college career. It was probably the, the most I wouldn't say stress free, but it was more. It was obviously less stressful than the tour I found. Um, yeah. Just because of the structure of things, mm-hmm. um, and I really enjoy in the team environment, as you you may have seen me when I've played world team tennis and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's you know I, I I play junior Wimbledon and I had a friend who was at LSU at the time, and his the, 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 the assistant coach was over while I was playing and I said, look, I'm, I'm interested in coming to college. Um, so the, the, the friend of mine said, well, I'll, I'll get my assistant coach to come watch. Um, on that particular day, I, I'd actually played a guy called Robin Soderling and won. So it was a, it was a good recruiting tool for him to come to watch me play that day. So I Perfect got a recruiting. Timing. Yeah, absolutely. And I got a recruiting trip over to LSU um, and loved every moment of it. It was just the best experience Um you know, deep south, the food, the uh, American football, 
the facilities um, at the time, the girls, you know, everything, you know, was, was great. Um, you know, it was all good fun and it was uh, it was an opportunity that I thought was going to be, you know, it was it was a great choice for me rather than turning pro and I never really looked back. So I, I got to spend five quality years there because I, I did actually get ruled ineligible at the start, which ended up being... Um, LSU sort of got ruled in favour of, of myself and, and I got my eligibility back. Um, so that was nice that I was able to finish a degree. And yeah, the, 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 the tennis on uh, you know, from a team perspective was great fun. Um, I got recruited to play around about three or four in the team. Mm-hmm. Um, but because of my uh, ineligibility for my freshman year, I ended up going in playing number one uh, wow. in, my soft, in my sophomore year. So it was a bit of a... You know, a bit of a shock to the system knowing that I'd go in, you know, top of the lineup early doors because I didn't think I was anything, you know, I wasn't the best singles player in the world. I, I definitely think I had more of a doubles eye even mm-hmm. back then. Um, but I actually surprised myself with my, you know, the, the matches that I played, the players that I beat in college. Um, I actually started to really enjoy it. I think the the fitness element and the, the structure of the way things worked gave me more time on court to play to work on my game and that year out I really be able to you know adapt to college tennis before I actually played college tennis mm-hmm. um, which was which was a bit of a godsend really because I was able to improve my strokes you know all different elements of my game and and not stress too much about the school I think as a freshman you sometimes come in and there's so many external things to worry about mm-hmm. that it takes a little bit of time to adapt which I always got to do prior to actually playing so um, I loved it. I, you know, I wish I could do another year. Um, it's it's one of them. You know, you look back yeah. and you, you 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 look at your college career or your college life and just think how great it was. That small bubble that you'll never be able to recreate. Um, and again, you know, I've got so many great memories from it. So many friends from uh, LSU and my brother went to LSU after me, which was which was nice. Um, so I still a- able to keep in touch with. Um, you know his friends even that I went to LSU because we've obviously kept in touch with some different people I, I think a lot of people don't understand how valuable that time is instead of skipping it that I guess most people are trying to do now because once they have a ranking they try to continue that momentum into the pro career rather than maybe slowing it down and developing a little bit more in college yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say college is for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know, so not not playing, not saying people are selfish or anything, but mm-hmm. to do things for others in in your tennis is you know sometimes quite difficult for some players. People think that they, you know, it, I'm not saying it's about them, but they're obviously focused on their own career, and that's fine. Um, but people who do like the idea of playing in a team sport, um, college tennis is probably the best way of. of continuing your tennis career Mm -hmm. while still being able to do a bit of study you know become more of a person in terms of physically mentally um maybe even improving tactically as well uh, because you get so many matches uh win or lose you get to play another match the next day or the next week um yeah there's there's definitely there's definitely a a niche of of players that might not necessarily suit college tennis but the majority of players should go i think um no matter what level they are just to even you know dominate college for a year or two and then be able to say yeah that that level is good but i'm better than that and i can you know make that progression from um from college tennis into the pros quite quickly that the, the worst case scenario is turning pro at such a young age and they're not physically mentally ready for it mm-hmm. even financially ready for it um and then sort of having a little bit of success at the start but then sort of plateauing out at you know five six hundred yeah uh, even even higher maybe you know four three hundreds and not really being able to make that next step up into the challenges because once you plateau out and you don't have the finances or that you know the coaching ability skills um, you then really find it difficult to then push on again and then you get to a point where you've lost so many matches you burn yourself out um, college just gives you everything without the stress of you know that I mean you obviously do have a financial burden in terms of uh, some scholarships you know some schools don't necessarily give you the biggest scholarships but mm-hmm. there are enough opportunities in college where you can probably find a good enough scholarship if you are good enough to um, you know suit you and suit your family's uh, needs really did you, did you you said you kind of had that doubles eye once you came into college 
did you make that decision to fully focus on doubles early on once you turned pro, or was that kind of an afterthought once you tried singles? Um, I think, I mean, I, I played I played good singles, but I also knew I wasn't probably the fittest or fastest player around a tennis court. Okay. Um, just from the sense that I always felt I knew where my weaknesses were um, when I was playing singles. Um, you know, I, I, I had a... As I said, I had, I had a good college career on the singles court, but I I knew when I come up against a certain type of player in college that I would get beat. And it was very quickly when I turned to the pros and got looked at the challenger level of the of the singles guys, mm-hmm. I could tell that that type of player was pretty much every player or every other player. So to break that, you know, break my issues was going to be very difficult. Um, and I think it was, you know, something as simple as that. I wasn't taught at a younger age how to move correctly in terms in terms of the new way of playing tennis. Okay. Um, I was taught very old school, so everything was closed dance. Um, wow. And without noticing everything that I ever did from a, from a movement perspective was wrong. And it wasn't until I, I sort of had a coach around about the age of 24, 25, 26 that sort of taught me how to play with the open stance more. Okay. It was it was too late. It was, I mean, I, I, I got the gist of it. I understood it. I tried it and I, I improved with it. But I was still, you know, no, I hadn't done it enough to sort of progress playing that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I'd made them decisions sort of around about the same time that, you know what, this, this, I'm not going to make money at the sport. My career high could be in the 300s, but that's still not making me any money. So financial sense what was to, to focus on what I thought I was good at. Okay. Um, and my ranking in doubles progressed very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, within within 12 to 18 months, I'd, I'd broke top 200. Um, and within two years, I'd been in college to play in tour events that had been the Bryan brothers who were world number one. So that was a, a huge, you know, um, stepping stone to sort of see, look, if you can beat the Bryan brothers, you, you, you've got a real good chance of playing the sport, you know? Yeah. So, um, that was, that was something that I, you know, cherished them moments of, of playing someone and, and beating someone at that level. Um, mm-hmm. But I think they took me a little bit more serious after that because I've never beaten them since and I've probably played them 10 times. Um, and they are the best for, for a reason and they, they are a quality yeah. pair and they're, they're great guys. They are great guys as mm-hmm. well. Um, so it was, um, it's nice to obviously play and beat these guys, but then the reality check of once you're at that level and you get the respect of the other guys that, you know what, you need to make another step in your game to then progress up to the to the uh, tour event level, which, you know, it took a little bit of time once I got there to sort of figure things out. Once you make top 100, you always have that feeling of, oh, I've made it in the, in the sport. That mm-hmm. was always that sort of, mar- you know, the mark where you can say, look, I'm, I'm now a player. Um, yeah. So once once I sort of hit that mark, I was thinking, you know what, I've you know I've I've done what I, I my goal was to make top hundred. I've achieved it, you know. Let's enjoy life. Um, but the reality was there was definitely more in there that I thought I could produce better tennis and and become more skilled at what I did. So to break the top fifty was the next barrier which I was able to do. Um, mm-hmm. And then you know the goal once you get there is to sort of you know again appreciate what, what you've achieved, but then try and push on, which Unfortunately, the ranking has never shown that, um, but I definitely feel over the years I've improved as a player um, mm-hmm. and understanding of what I can and can't do. And, you know, sometimes it's a bit of luck as well with partners. And, you know, it's not just, you know, if you're a singles player, it's all on you. But yeah. if you pick the wrong partner that doesn't work out, you know, that's no you know no disrespect to any player because it's not their fault. They've, they've obviously got their X factor, you've got yours. Mm-hmm. Um, so it sometimes just doesn't work out. And over the years, um, you know, the best partner I ended up having was my brother. Yeah. Um, and he dumped me for someone. So <laughs> it was, uh, you know, no, it was, it was a family decision, obviously, for him to move on. And obviously with my age of being of 37, seven next month, it was, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the twilight of my career, but I still feel like I've got the capability of winning tournaments. So, of course. Um, you know, I've, I've, I loved every minute of playing with Neil, and I wish we could be able to play again in the future. Um, yeah. But it's, it's, um, 
you know, I've, I've enjoyed my career. I don't think I, I've achieved as many things that I would have liked to have done. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's okay. You know, you know, I've, I've, I've given it my best shot. Um, and, you know, I've got to be very thankful for what I have. Mm-hmm. And I, I think you definitely have a very <laughs> long-standing career that people can look back at and really appreciate, especially with your brother. And I think when I first heard of you and your brother, I was thinking, wow, the British version of the Bryan brothers, because I never saw a sibling pairing with the same name playing together. So I thought, hmm, maybe this, maybe this will be interesting. Yeah, the, the, there's not been a huge number of brothers that have, have recently yeah. um, been at the top end of the game. But if you actually, if you actually work it out you could actually name some that would probably be you know successful pairs if they played together but some guys you know let's say Andy and Jamie Murray, yeah. they, you know if they played together consistently they would be yeah, um, Misha so. uh, the Zverev's you know the Zverev brothers yeah. they could be good um, it's just the fact that we play you know full time together or we're playing full time together mm-hmm. and only double specific um, I couldn't think of many many others that were just full time maybe the Ratuatana brothers from Thailand they, they had a bit of a bit of a run back in the day um, yeah. and I think they've, I think they've got the record for the most challenger titles ever Oh wow! Um, I, th- I think they're up in the like mid forties of titles, so that's that's a lot. They've, that they've, is spent a lot. An, uh, they've spent quite a lot of their career at the challenger level. <laughs> um, uh, so it's uh, yeah, it's. I mean, it's great fun playing with your brother. You know, at the time, it's it was a little bit of a risk, not from the sense that I didn't believe he was good, but I was playing with someone being so low at the start to get his ranking up. Um, but it worked out well in the end because his, his ranking within 12 months went from, I think it was almost unranked to top fit, top 100. So yeah. um, we, we progressed his ranking quickly and I've, you know, I'll, I'll look back with fond memories of you know, making that progress for him because you know, he's, he's going on to hopefully bigger bigger things and that that would be you know, the small part that I was able to play in and do that. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Yeah, I completely agree. I think the last two questions I have not related to tennis to wrap up this interview is one, is it true that your handicap for golf is six? It was. It was. It, was. it probably is. Yeah. I, if, if I had to put a number on it, I'd probably say closer to 10 now. Okay. Um, yeah. Just for the fact that I played more before I went to college. Okay. Uh, and in that first year of college, I was still able to play quite a bit because the team were traveling a lot. Okay. Um, I do I do love playing. Uh, I play an awful lot with Neil and Johnny O'Mara. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, we get out there, you know, as much as we can. And it's uh, it's a big passion of ours. You know, it, you know there's a lot of time to kill at times of tournaments. And if there's a golf course, we we try our best to get out there and, and smash a few balls about. Um, you know, I, uh, I I wish I could play more. Um, it might be something that I'll be able to do more once I you know hang up the rackets. But right now, the, the, the handicap is probably closer to ten, unfortunately. That's still that's still very impressive. I I don't even know what my handicap is right now. <laughs> yeah, Wait, it's, it's, it's tough. tough it's, it's tough, tough to keep. It, it's it, tough it, to keep track yeah. of. I I still don't yeah. fully understand how it works. Yeah, no, it's definitely something you should try. Yeah, have you been to the Open? Uh, no, I haven't actually. Considering how many great courses there are close by, yeah, uh, that host the Open, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm a little bit lazy from the fact that if I go to the course, yeah, I, I, I tend to only be able to see sort of one or two groups at a time, and on TV you see all the best shots. Sure. Um, so it's, okay. it's one thing and also for the fact that I'm still playing so yeah. I haven't had that many opportunities to do so um, but again once tennis finishes I'll, I'll have <laughs> more time on my hands to, okay. to potentially get out there um, That's fair. yeah that'd be great and the, my second question is you, everyone's pretty organized on tour and I think Neil said that you make your own bed in a hotel room that the maids don't yeah. have to come in and clean your own room because yours room is already really clean is yeah, that true I, I, I keep a tidy house yeah yeah it's, 
it's something that I've always done. I don't know why. I, I, you know, making the bed. I think I saw a like a like a general talk. He did a speech for like a high school or a university. I think it was. Yeah. Uh, and he said the bit most important thing of the day is making your own bed, and it just sort of, you know, gives you that bit of discipline of you know life. Um, so I always, I, you know, I tend to tidy up after myself a lot of the time, and it's yeah, it's a bit of a strange habit, but you know what? I don't. Give a monkey's what people think. I do it, and I, uh, that's fine. It's you know, what, you know. Thing. What, what, what can I say? You know, I'm a tidy guy. No, it's definitely not something to shy away from. I think everyone takes advantage of when they travel that you don't have to unpack. And I think yeah. once you travel a lot and you have that routine of staying clean, it's a really good thing to have, especially yeah, with a I'll family. Be, I'll be at honest, home. I think I, I think my wife takes full advantage of me for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I hope she doesn't listen to this interview, but she can be a little bit of a, um, what's the word? I don't know, but she's definitely the other end of the spectrum at times. So Really? Um, yeah. I so will directly dad, send her I've this. Pl- I've got plenty of time to sort of help uh, in that area. <laughs> I'll definitely tag her in this interview just to make sure oh, she listens to much. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ken, I really... really great stuff. Well, Ken, I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day and uh, just talking to us about who you are and what it's like, honestly, just talking about yourself. No worries. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Ken. I really appreciate it. Take care. Take care. Bye.